Graeme, congratulations. Thank you very much for joining us. Incredibly great news for supercars, for Ford and for fans universally with the announcement during the week that the Mustang is back. Yeah, exciting news. And not just for fans, by the way, but for employees, for dealers, anybody who's associated with the company in Australia and actually beyond Australia. So, no, really, really exciting news and really wonderful to see some of the commentary uh, coming through from customers and fans alike. I'm interested in the way in which the leadership mix works with this now, given the parties involved. There's Ford Australia, there's Dick Johnson Racing Team Penske, there's Tickford Racing. So who takes the lead on this and how much of you guys is in the recipe? Back early part of last year, uh, from a Ford Australia point of view, we decided that the time was getting right. We, we kept relationships with both teams quietly. We then engaged with Ford Performance because at the end of the day they are a Ford Performance division and we had the discussion say is this the right thing to do, can we, can we make this work technically and then that led us after we got that sorted into a space with the teams which was the latter part of last year. And you're staying with the V8 engine? Yep. Yep, so you know, we had a look at what our options might be, but um, at the end of the day, thinking through the aero and, and the, the silhouette and the body shape, uh, put that alongside a powertrain, that's, that's a lot of complexity to try to uh, think through. And at the end of the day, you know, that decision-making group between ourselves and Ford Performance and the team, we, we thought it was probably the best outcome in terms of sticking with that V8. What do you think it means for Supercars Australia to have Ford back in next year? Well, we've talked a lot about the importance of being able to diversify what we race, uh, the importance of that in terms of relevance, but also broadening our reach to new fans. And I think the Mustang, because of the, the nature of being a, a cultural icon, certainly helps us do that. Collingwood needs Carlton, Australia needs England. All of these rivalries in sport are a really big part of what goes on. We need GM and Ford in the battle, don't we? A really important part of the racing DNA. Absolutely, it's important, but it, it, it may be a nucleus of what we do, but it can't be everything that we do. So it's very, very important that we continue to expand what we race and, and who we race with. Uh, but yeah, we don't want to take away from the excitement of, of bringing Ford and the Mustang uh, to, to supercars, but we need to continue uh, to look to diversify that product, as I mentioned. There is plenty of excitement about the Mustangs return here in the pit lane. I don't think there's anyone more excited than Mark Larkham. Larko, how good is it going to be to see the Mustang back on the grid at the Adelaide 500 next year? Has it kind of been that obvious, Jess? I just feel like Ford have wrapped their arms around the loyal and I'm good on them for doing that. I think even Holden fans would admire that. But the big question is, it doesn't matter whether you're Ford, Holden or Hyundai. Look at that. That is a really gorgeous race car. But the question is, two-door car, sports body, how's it actually going to work? So let's have a little bit of a play with this. If I get my V8 supercar, that's the basic framework and floor pan and everything that is part of all the cars. And you can have a quick look at that if you want to see it's the complexity. I mean, it's a, it's a very complex, great thing. But when I actually get the Mustang body, here's Chaz Mostert, here's our supercar. And if we bring that down in there and try and make that fit on there, all right, we'll just uh, put him about exactly there. You can see there's a little problem straight away, is the roll cage. Now, we're not allowed to move the roll cage or cut it up or move it, so there might have to be a little bit of work with the body just to make that work. Now, when we actually look, a lot of people are really interested what it looks like when we put the ZB Commodore up against the Mustang. You might be surprised at this. I know I was. Let's just run that again. Here we go. Now, if you look, that's going to fade out, and I've put Craig Lowndes' Commodore there. Now, you can see the slope is really similar, but this big bonnet on the front of the Mustang is going to create a lot of frontal area, some drag there, which might be a bit of an issue. So, let me go back here and talk about what's it actually going to look like. We had a bit of fun with this yesterday, so we'll have a bit of fun with it today. What are some of the liveries some of the cars going to look like? So, Tim Edwards dropped me in a bottle of this Commodore killer. I put a little bit on my on my rag here and let's just see if we can wipe away some of this falcon bodywork to reveal what these things might look like as Mustangs. I love doing this. That is, seriously, look at that. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous car. What about from a rear three quarter? These things arguably even look, even look better, don't they? Look at the back end of that car. Simply stunning. I mean, I, seriously, come on. If you're, if, you're a, if you're a Holden fan, I reckon you'd even support this. Look at that. Commodore Slayer. That's not my words, that's someone else's words. But the future, what it looks like? Well, here we go. 
I reckon there's half a chance. Remember that Walkinshaw is actually the importer and distributor of the Camaro, right? The Chevrolet General Motors Camaro. These guys compete against each other around the world, so who knows if that's what's coming.